South Africa, Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto are running mates in Kenya's upcoming general elections. They're vying for the roles of president and prime minister, and they are the classic election double team. As inseparable as Bert and Ernie. As brutally efficient as Serena and Venus. Yet as full of passion as Miss Piggy and Kermit. Kenyatta and Ruto love to share everything. It's so sweet. They're even both accused by the International Criminal Court of masterminding Kenya's post-election violence in 2007. But come on, what leader in waiting or indeed sitting prime minister doesn't have to face a few criminal charges? There is still a chance that Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto will not be eligible to stand as electoral candidates because of the ICC investigation, but will it actually happen? And will Kenyatta and Ruto be charged anyway by the ICC for corruption and instigating political violence? You know what? I don't think they give a damn because they have each other! I can show you the world Shining, shimmering, splendid Tell me, princess, now when did you last... Malawi's president, Joyce Banda. Man, I had such high hopes for this lady. But she clearly knows nada about being a proper head of state. I mean, what sort of president would actually sell the presidential freaking jet? It's a jet. It's awesome. And she sold the government fleet of 60 Mercedes cars. She also suspended Malawi's anti-gay laws because she wants to encourage debate on the issue. And she ordered massive austerity cuts and took the brave decision of devaluing Malawi's currency in an attempt to stimulate growth. Just print more Benjamins, Banda. Look how well it worked in Zimbabwe! What? Thankfully though, this new documentary by Speak It Films will reveal the true, irresponsible face of Joyce Banda. My feeling is that we've wasted 50 years. There's been very little progress in changing the status of people at grassroots. It's heavy, but I'm able to carry it. Why? because I'm an African woman. Then there's her ridiculous logic of choosing to work with China instead of the West. China will decide today we shall develop this, the next day you sign and work starts. We know that if it had been in the Western world, we would have been talking for two years. And the icing on the freaking cake is that she's already ruled out a unilateral extension to her presidency. She craves it. If at the end of two years, we have run and run and then the people of Malawi say, no, we're not satisfied. We can't re-elect you. That's fine. I had the fortune of living in New York for about a year, and although I loved it, I know it would be even more awesome to be there right now. Because the city seems to be embracing African musical talent like never before. One African living legend who's just performed there is Zimbabwe's Oliver Mutukudzi. If you've never heard his music before, get your butt to iTunes and check it out. Here's some footage of a concert he recently played in Webster Hall, New York. <laughs> And that's it, guys. My name's Ikena as we get. Thanks for watching the show. I'll see you again next week for another edition of What's Up Africa. My message was time has come for women of this country to do what? to become economically empowered.